of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My dear people of God, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. My dear people of God, with joy I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sins and grants you the newness of life in Jesus Christ. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heaven. Leave us not without consolation, but send us the spirit of truth whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Acts chapter 1, verse 12 to 26. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. All of these, with one accord, were devoting themselves to prayer, together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David. Concerning Judas, who, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus, for he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in the ministry. Now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in in the middle and all his bowels gushed out it was it and it became known to all the inhabitants of jerusalem so that the field was called in their own language alkadama this is field of blood for it is written in the book of psalms may his camp become desolate and let there be no one to dwell in it and let another take his office so so one of the men who accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day he was taken up from us. One of these days, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And it was put forward, Joseph called Bar Barsabbas, who was also called Justice and Matthias, and they prayed and said, "You Lord, who know, who know the hearts of all, show us, show which one of these two you have chosen to take place in the ministry, an apostleship, from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place, and they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles." This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle's reading is from 1 Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it, come, when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were, ha strange were happening to you, but rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. And if you are insulted by the name of Christ, you are, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. Yet, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let, his, let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God, and it, if it begins with us, that will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God. And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and sinner? 
and the sinner. Therefore, let those who suffer according to God, to God's will, entrust their souls to a faithful Creator while doing good. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that at the top of, that at the proper time He may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on Him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful, your adversary, the devil's prowl around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after, after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will will himself confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dom dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter, beginning at the first verse. At that time, when Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all who have given, whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. to come forward. We have a full house today. There you go. <laughs> Good morning. First of all, I want to say a very big thank you for those songs that you sang to us. They mean so much to us. And you have wonderful voices. You made me want to become a small child like you again. God bless you all and your Sunday school teachers as well. God bless you. This morning we want to talk about something very special. We want to talk about how God loves us. You know why? Because without God, he has nothing. 
God give you food, God give me food, God give me clothes to wear. God allow me to open my eyes to come to church this morning. And guess what? God loves you all. I love you too, and I know you love me. Right? But someone that is so special, more than all of us, is Jesus Christ. Jesus died for us. Jesus provided for us. Jesus gave us everything. Do you, when you go to school, you know, at times the teacher asks you to do some work, right? For you to, maybe to do some classwork or even homework. And at times you tend to forget when the teacher asks you to do something in, 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 um, in your class, right? But then all of a sudden, maybe you will remember. Who made you remember those things? Anybody? Yeah? Yes, God. God is everything to us. So we always have to praise Him and thank Him for who He is to us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. And please say after me. God, thank you for loving me. May I love you as I love my parents and my friends. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Father, the omnipresent, the one who gives life and the one who takes it away. We are thankful for being in your presence, O Lord, and about to hear your word. Open our hearts, O Father, so we can reflect on who you are to us, and may we be stewards of your word. And Father, I humble myself in your presence that, Lord, you speak to me, through me, and for me. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, 
O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Good morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord, who was, who is, and who is to come. This past week was a very memorable week for us who call ourselves Christians, and unfortunately not many of us reflect or remember what actually happened, especially on Thursday. Thursday was a commemoration of Ascension Day, and a lot of us don't remember that. But this morning I want to talk about something from the first reading we read from Acts of the Apostles. And the theme I want us to reflect on for this week is what I will call, You Are Chosen by God. You did not choose God. God chose you. And so um, I want to ask a few questions as we ponder upon these things. Have you ever experienced not being chosen? Maybe it was a team, a job, a part in a play, a college you wanted to go to, a girl or a boy you loved. Feelings of rejection can creep into our minds. We start to question why. Well, in the, in the first reading for today, we hear both Justus and Matthias. And these two men were considered as the one to replace Judas as the 12th disciple. Matthias was chosen, and Justus was not. Justus knew the embarrassment of not being chosen for this position. But yet, we know that Justus and every single Christian are chosen by God to be witnesses for him. But someone needed to replace Judas. And the apostles were together between Jesus' ascension, which we commemorated on Thursday, and Pentecost, which is next Sunday. The apostles didn't know the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was coming, but they actually did know they were to spread the good news about Jesus Christ that the Lord himself delivered to them before he ascended to heaven. They needed to be at full strength, and so they considered two men for the job, Justus and Matthias. Both were qualified and had experience. Both had served faithfully and would make a wonderful apostle. Both were loved by God. They were both good men, but only one could be chosen. And so they cast lots, and Matthias was chosen. Today, he is remembered as a saint, and even has a day every February 24th we commemorate St. Matthias Day. But what about justice? He is the forgotten man, at least scripturally. He is not heard from again in scripture. And that is what sometimes happens when you are not chosen. Justice was probably heard on that day. He was qualified and he was experienced. 120 of his fellow Christians said he was eligible, but Matthias got the job. Justus even knew that God had caused the lot to fall where it did. God chose Matthias rather than him. Well, as human beings, we can feel for justice. We want to be the chosen one all the time. We want to be the favored one, 
the best dressed, the most likely to succeed, the captain of the team. We want to be loved, we want to be admired, we want to be appreciated, and we want to be complimented. We want honors, we want the awards, and we want the promotions. Oh, my dear people, it feels so good to be appreciated. But in our world, we cannot all make it to the top. If we did, the structure would all crumble. The late Peter Tosh said, everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to die. Unquote. No matter how the world of today tries to not let it happen, not everybody can be the first. And the reality is that there is no consolation prize for second. You either make the team or you don't. You either get the job or told we cannot use you. You either achieve the college scholarship or receive the rejection letter. No matter how blessed we are, we have all had an experience where we were not the chosen one, and it hurts, it stinks, and it can cause tears of pain. But however, whether or not the world has chosen us for any special honors or awards, God, by his grace, has chosen us. To be chosen by God is the greatest recognition in life. Because time after time and scripture after scripture reminds us of our chosen status. Isaiah wrote, and I quote, if you are my servant, rather you are my servant, I have chosen you and not cast you off. Fear not. For I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Unquote. You can find that in Isaiah chapter 41, verses 9 and 10. My dear people, Jesus himself told his disciples, You did not choose me. But I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Unquote. By Jesus' death on the cross, he shows us how that despite our sin, we are still special to God. We are the chosen ones who are loved, who are forgiven, and who are saved by his grace. The Holy Spirit places on us God's spiritual team, which is the church. He invites us to come to his holy table where you and I receive the body and the blood and the forgiveness of our sins. We are God's chosen ones. And that is a blessing for you and I. Words spoken to us can make a big difference in our lives. A coach says, you made the team. A teacher tells us, you are an outstanding student. A beloved whispers in your ears, I do, when they are asked if they will marry you. A boss announces, you get the promotion. The hostess at a the, at the busy restaurant summons you by name and you feel somehow pretty good as you walk by the others who were waiting. In other words, my friends and my dear people of God, in words spoken to us at our baptism, God lovingly says to you and I, you are my child. I forgive your sins. You are now part of my family of faith. 
That is the power of God's words to us. Our value to God is not measured by how many teams we have been on, how many awards that we have won, the top of the mountain we think we have achieved, or how others view us. But rather, God himself by his grace, who made us in his own image and who saves us by his grace, gives our worth to us. Never ever forget or doubt that in Jesus Christ and in him alone, we are chosen by God. May that be the words that will prick your minds and your heart so that you know that you are special in God's sight and in God's presence. No matter whatever you might have done in life, God has already chosen you. God knew that you will fall into sin. He knew that before you came into this earth. But by grace, you have been chosen. Count yourself worthy. Count yourself privileged. Nobody can take that baptism you have been baptized into from you. Because it was that same baptism that Jesus was baptized. And so, you are special in God's sight. Hold on to that. Remind yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, yes, I look like God. Because you are made in God's image. And you are a replica of God himself. Because he took time to carve you. To make you so special that no one in this world will ever look like you. But you and you alone. So have faith, have privilege in that. And let people see you that you are God's child. And go out into the world. Enjoy yourself with the love of God. Don't let anybody take or steal your joy from you. But stand up and say, if God is for me, who can be against me? And let that be your joy and your song in life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we go stand? Together we confess the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing us with yet another day. We dedicate our souls and bodies to you and to your service, to a sober, righteous, and godly life. We pray and ask that you confirm and strengthen us with, for your service, that as we grow in age, we may grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, I pray. Father in heaven, we ask that you lavish your grace and protection for the days ahead. Keep us temperate in all things, and may we be diligent in our several callings. We ask for patience under our afflictions. Empower us with your grace so as to be just and upright in all our dealings. May we be full of compassion and be ready to do good to all men and women according to our abilities and opportunities. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Great God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we humbly ask you to remember in mercy and love the many unchurched people in this community. Grant that we at Zion may become more effective in reaching the lost 
Bless, we may pray our upcoming planting gospel seeds while serving human needs. Workshop so that we at Zion can build more bridges into our community. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord God, we intercede for the sheep of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Laurenton. We ask for your blessings on the men's ministry and the praise and dance ministry of this parish. Draw all our pers pers participants closer to you, filling them with your joy and peace. May we keep you at the center of all ministries and events conducted at our con congregations. To you, O oh Lord, be all glory and honor. We ask in this in the name of Jesus, our good shepherd, amen. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we remember your saints who are experiencing illness and need your healing hand. We especially pray for Donna Littlecook, Bernie Stigberg, and grandson Luca Pastor, Roosevelt Re Gray, Lauren Berrien, Roger Giordano, Carolyn Gabriel, Glenn Palomini, Helene Wetzel, John Hahn, Robert Brandt, Dr. Luther Gutnick, Shirley Dorsteck, and Robert Ellsworth Jr. We pray that you heal them and may their faith be resolute in you. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. let us at this time bring our personal request to the throne of grace. <laughs> Heavenly Father, protect our church family near and far, especially those who ser serve to protect our freedoms, serving as peacekeepers locally and in the military. Michael, Andrew, Ian, Patrick, Jenny, Paul, and Cassandra, may they always feel your presence in their lives. Keep them safe in your care. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, amen. Father God in heaven, we also remember Papa George Williams and Katie, who have lost a loved one, a mother and a wife. Especially for Papa George, when he will be by himself. Lord, may he never feel empty. May he never feel that, that space, that vacuum that is now there in his life and in his home. May he feel your spirit surround him. May your angels guide him and protect him. We pray for Katie, O oh God, as well as she goes back. And Lord, may you be with her when she is all by herself and reminiscing on the love and the the affection that she had so much garnered with her mother. Lord, may she always feel you. We know that all things work for good for those who trust in you. And so, Father, we surrender them to your mercy, Lord, that we use them as a point of contact for all those who feel a bereaved one that have left them, and they are now with that vacuum and no one to fill that void. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Let us share the peace together.
Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with this gift. With them we offer ourselves to be your servants and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Yes. Lift up your heart. Yes. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ and the Spirit, whom you poured out upon the church and your people. Therefore, with the church and earth, all creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. picnic 
June is here. Thank you. I'm getting old. <laughs> June 11th, and it will be at the Aqueduct Pavilion. Uh, we will have a service first, and then the picnic. So come with your friends, relatives, and your neighbors. Even those who don't talk to you, invite them. You never know what God, God may do in their lives. And um, on Thursday, this coming Thursday, we will be having a movie night upstairs. And the movie we will be watching is um, Fireproof. It will be one at 2 p.m. and the other at 7 p.m. So those who cannot come because of it is late in the evening, you can still come for, at the 2 p.m. one. And uh, we will learn a lot from it, and we can talk and discuss about all what we've learned and what we've observed in retrospect of what our lives have been and what we could do better. So we will brainstorm with each other and see what God has in store for us. And we will do the same at seven. There, we will have popcorn and um, uh, juice and sodas, no wine or whiskey. Just, <laughs> you know, we can have that later when we go home. But please take note of that. And then right after this service, we will meet at the Will Groovy Room for those who want to do um, the... Uh, yeah, the AED, the AED training. Uh, please come. If you have not signed up, you can still come, right? Yes, you can still come. The more, the better, because it will enhance us to know what we do during um, a situation wherein someone is in distress and there's an AED machine somewhere. So we will know how to use it. So please come and learn from it. I will be there myself. Uh, so please take note of that. And then we are looking forward to uh, planting gospel seeds while serving human needs, which will take place on the 29th of September to the 1st of October. Pastor Roosevelt Gray will be here with us to conduct that workshop. We have already um, engaged the, the mayor who will uh, be meeting with us uh, to talk about what the needs are within the community and how the church can have an impact and where we can see ourselves fitting in to collaborate with the city as well as all the other stakeholders within this place. And it's not just the mayor. We'll be coming to our own uh, president of uh, Schenectady County Community College, Dr. Mono. He will be, I will talk to him and look at the time that will be fitting for him. So we will go there and meet with him and he will tell us from his experiences, what are some of the needs within the community. And the, the, as well as the uh, fire department, as well as the, the police chief, We'll be talking to all of them, engaging them, so that we can be better prepared to see how we can serve the people within this part of our Zion Lutheran Church. Um, I don't think we have any more, apart from all what is stated here. So please take note of all the announcements. Yes, oh, thank you very much. Um, we want to make sure that we have the accurate addresses and email, as well as uh, phone numbers of our members because I've tried to call some of them, but we keep having the wrong number. So please, if you can use the card in the pews there and just update your information so that we can store it in our database called REM. That way we'll be able to um, go in there, access it, and then see um, the numbers that we need to call and then call you and see how you're doing and all, because that's what we do to help one another and make sure that we are all our brothers and our sisters keepers. So please, if you can kindly fill that out, and uh, we'll be talking about this uh, every week, but if you have filled it out once, you don't need to fill it out at the next week. Just once, and then we will have it and enter it in the database. And I thank you all for your patience in listening to me, and may God bless us all, in Jesus' name. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.